Good morning, guys. We have been waiting on this day for years, not months, years. We are heading to Lake Bled. We're currently here in the city center of Ljubljana. If you're curious to what Ljubljana is like, then check out our Ljubljana video that we filmed. But first, watch this video of Lake Bled because I promise you, it's totally worth it. If you're unfamiliar with Lake Bled, it is a lake in the northern part of Slovenia nestled in the Julian Alps. And what makes it super unique is there's an island in the middle with a church on it, if you can see it behind me over there. Basically, it's one of the most beautiful places you can ever imagine, and I can't wait. But first, we have to get there. We're taking a local bus from here in Ljubljana up to Lake Bled that should take about an hour and 15 minutes-ish. We're doing that really early in the morning too. It's currently six in the morning in an effort to beat the crowds, get some really good drone shots. So let's go. So we got two tickets. It was six euros and 30 cents each. So like 12.60, not bad to take us an hour and 15 minutes-ish to Bled on the bus. There are two options that you can take. You can take the bus or you can take the train. I'll go more in depth in that once we get there because it's a little bit loud on the bus. It's freezing. <laughs> I was planning on going over the spiel while we were on the bus, but the music was very loud on the bus. Even at 6 a.m. it was really, really loud. So there are two ways that you can get to Bled if you don't rent a car. You can one, take a bus, which is what we just did from Ljubljana, or you can take the train. It's about the same price. I don't want to give you an exact price because I don't totally know. But if you take the train, there are two options that way as well. One option will take you to Leski Bled. It's near Bled, but it's not in the town of Bled. And then you'd either have an hour walk to the lake, which is not really worth it, or you'd hop on the bus and it would take you on a 10 minute drive the rest of the way to Bled. Or you could take another train that will take you to the other side of the lake from where we are now, but that train runs more infrequently. It's not as often. So those are your two options, either train or bus, or you could just rent a car. Oh, wow. Hannah, look. Oh. Guys, when I say I have been desperate to come here for years i am not kidding this is this is a bucket list item for me yeah. this is oh it's so beautiful Also, we hit 2,000 subscribers the other day and we cannot thank you enough for being so kind and supportive because it seriously means the world to us. Amazing and you all. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a crazy year and we're so happy to have you along with us. And we're having a blast to do it too. So we're gonna continue to show you the world and thank you so much for your support. Let's get back to the lake. Today's vlog's a little bit different in the fact that we're starting it slightly before the world wakes up. So we were gonna plan on doing a lap around the lake and stopping along the way at the different things that we had planned, but unfortunately they're all closed right now. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna leisurely stroll around the lake. It takes about an hour and a half to walk around. And then after that, we will start doing, I guess, what I had planned. <laughs> I was so dead set on beating the crowds that I also beat all of the stores here. So you learn. Either way, it's still going to be a perfect morning for a walk, even if it's a little bit on the cold side. Back home in Nashville, we used to walk around a place called Radnor Lake, and we would talk about our dreams for this trip and all the places that we wanted to go, and one of those places was Lake Bled. So the fact that we're now walking around Lake Bled and just enjoying our morning is kind of surreal, and I'm just like still so excited to be here. Even though this isn't what we had planned necessarily, we were gonna make some stops along the way, this is a very peaceful way to start the morning and I am not complaining at all. We'll get to all this stuff later, but this is nice. It's also warming up a little bit, slowly but surely. When we got here, it was 38? 30, yeah, like yeah, 30 degrees. degrees Celsius. Oh no, that's Fahrenheit. Oh, Fahrenheit. No, 38 degrees I'm getting Celsius so confused. We still haven't figured out that conversion yet. <laughs> no, not really. So anytime you see pictures of Lake Bled, you're gonna notice Bled Island. The centerpiece of Bled Island is the Church of the Mother of God, as well as the 99 steps that it takes to climb to the top. The church has origins dating back to the first century, but the current church since it's there now dates back to the mid 1600s. So 
Old by American standards, but pretty young relative to Europeans. So the first step was trying to find a way to get to Blood Island. You can take three different ways, I think, where you can hire somebody to row you out on a large boat, which is what we're doing, or you can rent a paddle boat yourself, or you can kayak. Yeah. So I read online that tradition states that if you want to get married in the chapel here, you have to carry your bride up all 99 stairs. Thank God we're married. Here on Bled Island, you can go into the bell tower, you can go into the provost house, which I believe is now like a souvenir shop. There's also a cafe here and a Baroque statue of Mary Magdalene, as well as a chapel that I got a couple shots of on the way up the 99 steps. No, you're fine. It's 12 euros each to go inside. Okay, thank you. Just to get to the island, it's 30 euros, plus another 24 to get into the church. We're gonna view it from the outside. It's really pretty from the outside. Yep. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Yay, coffee. We got the walnut potizza, mm -hmm. which is the traditional version of potizza. Mm. It's good. Main difference, this one's warm. Ooh. Oh, please, Mr. B. Now that we got our coffee in us, we're a little more awake. We're gonna do a little lap around the bottom of the island. Another body of water. Trey already touched it and he said it wasn't as cold as he thought it would be and... It's actually pretty warm. I don't know if I believe it. Okay, what? <laughs> it's like bath water. It's like warm. Maybe it's because it's like just starting to cool off outside, so it's like gotta work up the courage to get really cold. I will say <laughs> though, the I will say though, it does not smell very good over here. Well, it's 10:25, and we were supposed to be back on the boat, but we're the only ones on the boat, and we were not the only ones on the boat when we came here. <laughs> I am the captain now. So for weight distribution, I've been moved to the front center part of the boat. So this is the part where I lead the entire group in song. Thanks so much. We didn't officially make it around the entire lake before we went and did the boat ride, but it does look like there are different boat services around the lake. You don't have to go to where we were. I think where we were was just the closest one to us at the time. I really wish we had done the paddle boat, honestly. That would have been fun to row ourselves out there ourselves. That would have been fun. Thing to note about paddling yourself out there though is it is by the hour. It's not a flat rate. Ours was a flat rate, which kind of made more sense. We could have stayed all day out there because we were just having so much fun relaxing and taking in the views. We're getting closer to the water. This is the side that we haven't been on yet, so I'm really excited. I mean, look, there's no bad angle. Guys, I gotta be honest, I knew Lake Blood was beautiful, but Slovenia as a whole has come out swinging Ljubljana, the, the old town in Ljubljana, Ljubljana Castle, the views around Ljubljana, and then here. Maybe it's because we travel so much and go so fast that I don't really get to properly dive into a country before we arrive, but Slovenia's completely caught me off guard. This place is stunning. We're gonna do that someday. Uh, maybe. Over the past probably month, maybe two months, we've done a lot of things that have involved heights and Portray has braved them all. But there is a hike here that you can do that provides an amazing look at Lake Bled. We are not going on it because there are certain parts that get kind of sketchy. We've also, so. We were also able to fly the drones. That's yeah. the main reason why. Totally. And because so. I'm scared. <laughs> We spent the last like 40 minutes walking around more of Lake Bled and we are rapidly approaching our next stop. Final push up to the castle. You can either drive to the top, which is I think what smart people do, or you can climb to the top or like walk to the top, which is what we're doing. The hike to the top it is basically just stairs. It's just a climb and man, is it long? Get a dog. 
Finally made it up to Blood Castle and the views are amazing. Blood Castle is one of the main attractions here on the lake. The history of this castle goes all the way back to the early 11th century, while the current look of the castle was rebuilt after a major earthquake in 1511. It underwent a bit of restoration back in the 1950s and 60s, so most of what you can see now can be basically traced back to that makeover. One of the biggest attractions of this castle is unquestionably the views you get of the lake. It's the only spot that I've seen that allows you to get a great view from above without having to hike up a steep hill or trail, unless you're like us and didn't drive or take the little tram. Inside of Blood Castle, you'll find a lot of different things to do from like wine cellars, restaurants, museums, okay. <laughs> and including coffee shops with amazing views. And that's where we're going right now. There's the forks. Oh. <laughs> I swear, I swear I got bored. So we needed a bit of a pick-me-up since we got up at like four this morning and we are splitting a bled cream cake. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really know what's in it, but it looks incredible. And it's one of the best known Slovenian desserts. It looks like banana cream pie. I know it's not, but that's what it looks like and it makes me really excited. It's incredible, isn't it? You're never gonna see any of this again. <laughs> When we got here this morning, it was eerily quiet. It felt like there were not a ton of people around and we were waking everybody up, but we also had it all to ourselves. It was just really cold. Now that it's warming up by itself because the sun's out and now that there's a little bit more people around, we're gonna go down there and explore and see what the town's all about. All right, I've been tasked with finding a little, little snack for us to get at this market and Trey scoped out a bench. Oh boy, what'd you get? Goat oh, beers. <laughs> Another reason why we decided to just grab something and then sit by the water and have lunch is because we had such a good experience with it in Dubrovnik. We just sat by the water and had lunch because Dubrovnik was pretty pricey and to be honest, Lake Bled's pretty pricey too. And if you ask me, it's hard to beat sitting by the water and just having a slice of pizza. This is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. It is definitely one of the places that I will put on my list to come back to. Slovenia as a whole has been amazing. But for now, we're gonna go meet up with some fellow travel vloggers and we're gonna grab a beer. And then the next time we see you, we're gonna be in Italy, country number 22 for my birthday. And if you know me, you know I'm a big birthday person. So this is kind of a big deal and we can't wait. <laughs> Whoa, there we go, a little better. <laughs> 